Hey guys, it's the Ghost Team again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with the Oculus Quest 2 and OpenXR. In the previous video, I walked you through how OpenXR works. We went through Unity, look at some of the components, how to add a feature, how to add the preview package. In this video, I'm going to show you how to combine that with XR Toolkit and seeing how it's going to work. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start using the new input system to track the device position and device rotation. I'm also going to show you how to use the Ray Interactors with OpenXR, how to make it work. Some of the objects are going to be kinematic, meaning that they're going to stay in place. Some other objects are gonna have physics, such as the ball that you're seeing in the scene. I also can change whether the ray is going to be white or red, depending on the ray cast selection. So there's a lot of it that we're going to be covering in this video, and I'm really excited about it. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we're going to be, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have, because I recommend that you watch the previous video. Since I went through all the different components that you need to add, we're using the XR plugin management, we're using OpenXR, I went through and set up the features for the Oculus Touch controller profile, which is now part of the new OpenXR component, so make sure you watch the previous video before you continue on. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be adding the XR toolkit, and again, this is going to be all experimental. A lot of you asked me if this was ready for production, and I'm using the preview packages for OpenXR and also the preview packages for the XR Interaction Toolkit, so make sure that you're cautious about that. What I'm really excited about, though, is that this actually works. So what we're going to do is we're going to be adding a new component here called the, let's see if I can remember what it's called, the <laughs> Interaction Manager. And this is going to be required because, you know, we're going to be reading information from the XR Toolkit, so you're going to need an XR Interaction Manager in here. The other thing that we noticed is we, we didn't have really our controllers. It wasn't tracking the position on, on the controllers. The reason for that is because we haven't really added anything. So I'm going to right click in here and we're going to be adding what's called Array Interactor. And the reason why I'm doing that here and not here is because we're going to be just copying this. I could go in here and basically add the component myself, which I'm going to do just, just so that I can show you. But the other pieces I'm going to be just copying from this component. So I'm going to copy the XR Ray Interactor to my left hand and just go ahead and paste that component. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the line render because they already have pretty fine settings and I don't want to go through that and have to do that from scratch, even though we could if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and paste that one as well. So we should have the XR Controller, XR Ray Interactor, the line render, and also the XR Interactor line visual. So I'm just going to go ahead and read get rid of that. And I'm also going to just clone this as soon as we were done and then make the right hand. That way we don't have to do that all over again. Okay, so in order for us to make this work, we're going to have to add some bindings. And in fact, I'm actually going to delete the, the left hand, duplicate, the, duplicate it, and I'm going to call it the right hand. That way we can add the bindings. So you know that I'm using the new input system. That's why I selected the action base component. So we're going to be using, you know, everything that comes from the new input system. So there's going to be bindings that we're going to be grabbing from, from the new input system. So let's go ahead and go back into the left hand. And a couple of things that we need to track on this component are going to be the position and also the rotation. So we're going to come down here and say, you know, there's a position action, a rotation action. There's also a translate anchor action, which I'm going to be binding to. So the first one, we're going to go ahead and add a binding, double click in here. And then it's going to ask you, and this is going to look weird at the beginning. I, I kind of got confused at the, at the beginning. But make sure that you follow this video and pause it. So we're going to be binding this to the left hand. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bind it to the device position because we want to know the position of the left hand on the XR controller. I'm going to do the same thing for the, for the rotation, but in this case, I'm going to be selecting the rotation. So let's go ahead and go there and then do that as well. Then for the translate anchor action, because I want to be able to translate, basically select this guy and bring it to the controller, is I'm not going to do all of them, but I'm going to do the translate, rotation, and then position. So let's go ahead and add this one. This one's going to be a little bit different, and I'm going to show you why. So go ahead and go here, and then XR controller. It's kind of funny that I, that I remember all this because it is, it is a lot of work. To, to go through and remember. Anyway, so if you go in here, you're gonna see that we have the Oculus Touch controller. We also have the, the open, for some reason it's not showing me. Let's go back. Oh, okay, we have to go to the actual controller. 
and it should be showing me the specific components that I that I installed. Let's see, open. Normally it says open XR, but if it doesn't, that's okay. We can go here, left hand, optional controls. And the one that, that I'm going to be binding to, it's going to be the primary. And let me go ahead and find it here. It's going to be my primary access to the access, which we're going to find in here. So make sure that it says left hand XR controller primary to the access. And then we're going to do the same thing in here, but it's going to, it's going to be the right controller, right? So we're going to go XR controller and then the right hand device position. Go ahead and go back to that. Add a new binding, double click on the binding and then do XR controller right hand and then the rotation. And I don't know why I keep doing that, but let's go ahead and do the last one, which is going to going to be my primary to the axis. And let's go ahead and go back to that right hand optional controls. And this one, I always have a hard time. You can also type it if you wanted to. So you can do primary 2D. And I'm actually just going to select it since I have it here, but you can search for it if you like to. And let me go ahead and find it here. Primary to the axis. There we go. And one thing that I that I made mistakes on was to to select the default one, which is not going to work because it will capture the primary to the axis from any control. Just make sure that it says right hand XR controller or left hand XR controller. Okay. So the next thing that I want to do now that I have those set up is let's go ahead and go back into my left one. So my left one, I don't want the the objects to basically attach to the controller. So what I'm going to do for that is we're going to go back into my XR Ray Interactor and we're going to be changing this. I'm going to force grab. So if you disable this, the object is going to stay at its original position. You're going to be able to move it around, but it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to stay still. I'm also going to change the translate speed. That way when we change the position of the, of the actual anchor of the ray, it's going to have a higher speed. Okay, so that looks good. Then on my right controller, we're just going to use the default. We're going to actually if, if smooth the, the movement if we, if we wanted to. So, and we'll do that on the, I believe we can do that on the other, on the components themselves. So let's leave this as default for now. Now what I'm going to do on all of these ones, we can, on this one, I'm going to make it, I'm going to select the grabable. So I'm going to do XR grab interactable. And in this case, I want this guy to basically have gravity. So it's going to fall. We're going to be able to move it. And this is a smooth position that I wanted to show you. So if we want to just smooth the position, you can change this setting as well. They have different options in here for how the grab, the grab component will interact. You can do kinematic, you can do instantaneous, you can do velocity tracking. Instantaneous, if you were to grab that object, it's basically going to attach to the controller right away. If you're using the controller that is doing a force grab, Okay, so on all of these other ones, I'm going to keep it simple and we're going to just grab the, oops, let me go ahead and go back, do the XR grab interactable. And then I'm going to, basically it's going to use kinematics. So I'm just going to enable that because I want those to stay in place. This is going to be the only one that is going to, that is going to fall with gravity. And then these three cubes, I'm going to do the same thing. And it looks like I already have them. It's going to be the XR grab interactable and we are going to be tracking the position, the rotation. Again, if you don't want to track a specific component, a uh, rotation or position, you can also disable this. Say I didn't want to rotate this with my controller, then I could disable that if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it as default. And that's basically going to be it. Let's go ahead and try this and see if I didn't, if I didn't make any mistakes. All right, so it looks like we have the position on the controllers working. I also have the race. If I were to select one of these objects, you're going to see how the ray is changing to Y. That's because it's finding, uh, basically a, it's doing a ray cast on those objects. So let's try and see if we can. So one of the reasons we can't really select anything because I haven't really bind the action. So let's go ahead and fix that by going back into the XR controllers. Okay. So the last thing that I need to do in order for this to work is we didn't do the select action on either one of these. So it's actually good that we made a mistake because it makes you realize what we need to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into here, XR controller. This is the left hand. So we're going to select the left hand and then it's going to, we're going to have to select the trigger, which is the one that I'm going to do. So we can do trigger press. That's going to allow us to select these objects when we press on the trigger on the left hand. And we're going to do the same thing for this one. We'll just do a new binding and then go into path 
XR controller, right hand, and then in this one, optional controllers. And then we're gonna do the trigger press on that controller as well. Let me just make sure that works. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play in test it. Okay, so everything is working. Let me see if I can select this object. I can. This one, remember, it has gravity, so it's gonna fall down. So let's go ahead and try that one. Let's see if we can bring it in. Yep, we can bring it in. We can also do, if we wanted to do a little Christmas guy, we can do something like that. And there we go. Oh, don't go away. And then, and this one is like on my, on my face. Let me go ahead and get back in here. And let's get that out of the way. And my cubes fail. No, I wanted to use my cubes. So the cubes are really cool because I can bring them in, bring it out. This one is gonna attach it, attach to it because I have the force grab. But we can also, and, and because the controllers have rigid bodies, that's why they are colliding. So if I were to like push it, you can see that that has a rigid body. And then we can also bring these ones in. I can bring it out because we did the anchor change it on the changes on the primary to the axis. And then, you know, everything is working. So I'm going to call it good, guys. If you guys have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments.